In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God created us to experience joy and communion with him, to love all humanity, and to live in harmony with all his creation. But sin separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, and so we do not enjoy the life our creator intended for us. Also, by our sin, we grieve our Father, who does not desire us to come under his judgment, but to turn to him and live. As disciples of the Lord Jesus, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from God and neighbor. Repentance, fasting, prayer, and works of love, the discipline of Lent, help us to wage our spiritual warfare I invite you, therefore, to commit yourselves to this struggle and confess your sins, asking our Father for strength to persevere in your Lenten discipline. Most holy and merciful Father, we, we confess, confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, 
bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live. Therefore, we implore him to grant us true repentance in his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, that the rest of our life may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that, truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from the second chapter of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants of the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Here ends the reading. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would never have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. That the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to 
The second lesson is from the fifth and sixth chapters of 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the accept acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Here ends the reading. Oh, 
Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, For they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, O mortal, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In the course of the divine service of Ash Wednesday, these words are spoken as the pastor traces ashes on the head of the faithful, reminding them of their mortality. These words are closely linked to the imagery we speak over the graves of the faithful when we commit their remains to the soil and we say earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. All of the imagery of Ash Wednesday is to remind you that you will die. But do we really need that reminder this year? Let's be frank. We've had 482,000 reminders of our mortality. All of those people, all of them, they had names, they had families, they had lives. And we're reminded of those losses every time we turn on the news or we put on our mask, or we scramble to try and get a vaccine appointment. And as tragic as COVID has been in our world, we have almost lost sight of the fact that countless other losses have been experienced in the past few months from those things that simply do not garner headlines, like the pandemic does. Remember, mortal. You are dust. I think we all remember. We are all too aware that James 4 reminds us that you do not even know what tomorrow will bring for what is your life. You are a mist that appears for a while and vanishes. We have chanted the Psalms that say, Behold, you have made my days but a few hand breaths in my lifetime. It's nothing before you. Surely all of humanity stands as mere breath. Or as for man, his days are like grass, for he flourishes like a flower of the field. And when the wind passes over him, he is gone, and his place is no more. 
We hear these things and focus only on the solemnity or maybe even the morbidity of Lent. But believe it or not, even though we're to be reminded of our death, the intention is not to be morbid. As Christianity is wont to do, there is an essential paradox that is held within those words. For in the reminder that we will die also exists an exhortation that we must live. In the reminder that death will come to all of us, we are given a lens to help us see more clearly that the days that we have been granted to live are a gift from God. St. Paul tells us in our reading from 2 Corinthians today, he says, see, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. And when you read it, you can almost hear the conviction and sense of joy with which he writes those words. He was calling his readers to acknowledge that it is in the present moment, in the here and now, that we must understand that we are to live in Christ. That it is in him that we live and move and have our being. And this is in spite of the fact that life is just simply perfectly imperfect. Paul writes these words, but do you remember what he went through in his life? Shipwrecks and imprisonments and beatings. He lays those things out. And St. Paul points out that even in the midst of disappointments and struggles and, and suffering, there is life to be lived. There is life to be embraced. And we live that life with what he calls the weapons of righteousness on our side. And he recounts them as purity and knowledge and patience and kindness in holiness of spirit, in genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. As I was preparing for this sermon, I couldn't help but think of the movie The Shawshank Redemption. And, you know, there's this great scene in there where Andy and Red, two inmates who were serving life terms, they're, they're outside of their cells, they're in the yard, and they're sitting down with their backs against the wall, and Andy is talking about these dreams that he has for what life could be, even though he's locked inside of this brutal prison. And there's this pivotal scene in the conversation where Red tells him he needs to stop having hope. And Andy tells him, I guess what it comes down to is a simple choice, really. We have to get busy living or we have to get busy dying. What God wants for you and for me and the whole world is to get busy living. Yes, Ash Wednesday is a reminder that we're going to die, but it is also a reminder that we are to love and serve a God who wants us to live and wants us to live in the right here and the right now. This isn't some just future hope of heaven. Everything will be better and you know, in the future. This is about living right now into those words. And he wants us not living just any life, but this abundant life, one that is shaped with joy and peace and marked with love and with kindness and shaped by truth and joy and patience. Life is a gift that is given to us. This isn't something to be squandered or bemoaned. But that's difficult for us sometimes, isn't it? Because even with these weapons, these tools at our disposal, leading a sustained spiritual life is a challenge. It is part of our human nature that we are easily distracted. We're easily discouraged. We are weighed down by other seemingly more practical and more pressing concerns. Lent is that time for us to reset. It's that reminder that even when we stray in life, even when we take life for granted, God is ever-present 
calling us back to him. A theme is echoed in the reading from the prophet Joel. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all of your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Remember, O mortal, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But not yet. Not yet. In the meantime, live life, an abundant life. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Let us profess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, you have commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and you have, brought, and you have again brought us to the house of prayer to praise your goodness and ask for your gifts. Accept now in your endless mercy the sacrifice of our worship and thanksgiving and grant us those requests which will be wholesome for us. Make us to be children of the light and of the day and heirs of your everlasting inheritance. Remember, O Lord, according to the multitude of your mercies, your whole church, all who join with us in prayer, all our sisters and brothers, wherever they may be in your vast kingdom, who stand in need of your help and comfort. Pour out upon them the riches of your mercy, so that we, redeemed in soul and body and steadfast in faith, may ever praise your wonderful and holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and always, through all ages of ages. Amen. Let us now pray as our Savior taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.